Good morning, everybody. Today we will dive into a totally new topic. It's called Web Application Security. And uh, the first one we're going to cover called cross-site scripting, also known as XSS. Cross-site scripting happens when a web application fails to sanitize user input and allows arbitrary HTML or JavaScript code to be injected into the victim website. We have two different kinds of uh, cross-site scripting attacks. The first one is called the persistent and the second one is called the non-persistent. The persistent cross-site scripting attack happens when a website asks you, you as a visitor to put in some data and it will store this data. For example, a forum or a blog post where, where you can just comment on something and this comment will be stored on the server and if any other visitors will come to that specific site, that script will actually execute in their browsers. The second one we, about which we're going to talk today called the non-persistent cross-site scripting attack which happens if you have an input box and the web application fails to sanitize the user input but instead of storing the user input it just prints it back to your screen so the script will only execute in your browser. This could also be useful in some cases for attackers but because we are only doing ethical hacking courses and the main uh, idea behind cross-site scripting does not differ wh wh whether you're using a uh, non-persistent or persistent cross-site scripting attack, we will just stay with the non-persistent side now. So, to start up with a uh, non-persistent cross-site scripting attack, open up your browser and go to the Hungarian Ethical Hacking Community website, which could be found at ethicalhacking.hu, and open up goodies and change to the HackMe page. And as you can see, this is a simple uh, sample of cross-site scripting because it just gives you one input field or input box and it's asking for an email address. Because we are testing for cross-site scripting, what we're going to do is we're going to enter some uh, JavaScript in this field or box and see if it gets executed when we click OK. So the first and main and basic uh, cross-site scripting testing script is always an alert which gives you a simple message box if it gets executed. So just uh, follow my lead and type in, as you can see on the screen, uh, script alert in quotes one and then closing the script tag. This should be easy. So if I click OK, as you can see my script get executed and it, made, it gave me this nice little message box saying number one. Okay, that is pretty nice, but we would like to do something more. So, why don't we just start by dumping all the cookies that this specific website stored on our, on our hard drive. So, to show all the cookies that are on our hard drive, uh, use instead of the string uh, 1, the command document cookie. And as you can see, this is the command script alert docu document cookie. If I hit OK again, as you can see, we set up a speci special cookie for you saying, Hi folks, it's high time to attend an ethical hacking course. Well, I hope you agree with this uh, sentence. But as you can see, we were able to show a cookie here. Now, why would I like to show a cookie? Well, cookies could be used for many different purposes, that, but one really popular purpose for using cookies is actually store login data. So if we would be able to steal a specific cookie that would allow us to log in to a website in the name of the victim, that would be something really interesting and also dangerous. So to do that, we'll have to do many different things. So first of all, we'll have to set up, as we are acting now as an attacker, we would have to set up a web server. Well, I did that already, and it could be fine at this specific IP address. And as you can see, I'm using AppServe. It is a really good server program to do testing on your local uh, host. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to write together, I'm going to write with you together, a PHP script that would uh, do just a really simple task. It will get a, a parameter through the URL, so using the get uh, method defined in HTTP, and then uh, this specific parameter, which is going to be a cookie, it's each, each just going to write it out to a file. It's just going to log it to a file. And that, that's all what it's going to do. So open up Notepad and start writing PHP code, which you can do by op an opening tag, question mark, PHP. So the first uh, line of the code will just store the, the uh, 
variable coming from the URL in a local variable. So to do that, I specified a variable called cookie, and I encourage you to do the same with me. And using the get uh, system built-in variable, we'll be able to uh, get any kind, any uh, variable that passes, uh, that is being passed by the URL. So I'm just gonna call the URL variable cookie. So this will tell PHP to look at all the variables that will that were passed through the get request or the get response, and uh, from these choose the the one called cookie and put its value into the cookie variable. Okay, now we're gonna just go up a little bit faster. Now we're gonna open up a file and we would like to because we would like to dump all the uh, dump the cookie into that file. So I'm just gonna specify a variable called file and it's gonna open a file with f open. The name is gonna be cookie log .txt, and it's gonna be uh, w because I would like to write to this file. And that's it. The next line, uh, I would like to actually write the cookie uh, variable out to this file, so I'm just going to use fwrite, and it first asking me where to, so it's going to be into the file, and what, and what is going to be the cookie. And that's it. We should close the file, f close the file, and that's pretty much it. Now, the next next question is, how would we get the victim to actually visit this page and submit its cookie? Well, it could all be done by JavaScript page redirecting, and we will get to that later, but the first question is, if you redirect a, a victim to this site, to this PHP site, it, it will see no output, so he will just get a, a blank page. And getting a blank page is not good, because it's easy to figure out that something is going on, something bad happening in the background. So to do that, we're gonna redirect the client one more time. This could be done by using the header command. And we have to specify the location, and in our case, it's gonna be HTTP uh, ethical hacking, hacking.hu. So as you can see, uh, we would just redirect the, the victim to the main page and closing up HTTP. I'm just going to save this uh, to my desktop and I will call it cookie.php. So I just saved it and I will upload it to my web server. And as you can see, it's already here. I already uploaded it to the web server. So if you, did, if you couldn't follow my lead or it was just too fast for you with the PHP stuff, just uh, connect back now because we have the cookie PHP on the web server so you can use that to actually uh, capture cookies or steal cookies. So instead of alert, I'm just going to use a different JavaScript method called document.location and I have to specify the location which is going to, which could be done by using the equal sign. So location equals to HTTP uh, I need my web server's IP address, which could be found here. So I'm just going to copy the IP address of my web server and paste it in here. If I find my focus, oh, here we are. Paste it in. And uh, it's in the folder called XSS and cookie.php question mark. I need the name of the variable, which is cookie, and cookie equals. And now I need one more. JavaScript command, which is document.cookie again. So what it will do is it will just append to the end of this URL the cookie file. So the PHP will receive the cookie file specified as a cookie parameter, and it will just output it into a different file, into the cookie log file, if I have specified that right. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to say OK. And as you can see, it redirected me to the main page, so something happened in the background. If I go to my web server and open up the cookie log, as you can see, I have the cookie here. Actually, I have it twice because I already tried this demo before starting the presentation. But as you can see, the cookie just gets stolen. So if I would be an attacker and there would be a login cookie, I could just easily inject it back to my browser 
and start browsing ethical hacking.hu as, for example, an administrator or just a different user. So pretty much stealing someone's personality. Okay, so that was cookie stealing um, from cross-site scripting. Next up is, well, it's not that good that we redirecting to the main page because it's easy to figure out that something something is going on. So what we could do instead of redirecting here, we could use iframes and load up our cookie sealer script in an iframe that is uh, hidden. So that would just make it impossible to figure out that something bad is going on. To do that, I will write a little piece of JavaScript code that will put a hidden iframe into the code, into the page that is getting loaded, and then we'll, then we'll just take care of the rest. So I will just, uh, sorry, but I, I need some hints because uh, I, I don't want to mess up here on real camera, and also for people who are sitting here. So first we're going to specify uh, an iframe, which will, which will be put in a variable, so it's called the IFR variable and it's going to contain a uh, iframe so creating an element and it is an iframe iframe and then next one we have to specify the properties of this iframe so first of all the source address the source address is going to be http uh, my uh, address and then I need the cookie I mean XSS and then I need the cookie dot PHP question mark equals to and plus document cookie as you might remember from the previous one so document cookie and ending this line too and I will set the visibility of the iframe to hidden so it's impossible to see it only in the source code and now I'm just gonna put it into the document append child and the iframe so this is pretty much this is just the four lines of JavaScript code that will put in a hidden uh, iframe into the source code and then load up our cookie stealer script, steal the cookie, and it's pretty much uh, impossible to find out something happened, only if the user looks into the source code, which we will do, of course, later. So I'm just going to save it and call it the iframer.js and save it. Yes, I want to replace it. I already tried this demo before, but I'm replacing it so you can see it happens. I'm just going to upload it to the web server. And as you can see, I, I already have it uploaded here, just to uh, make this this uh, demo faster. So now we're gonna include this script into our uh, into the victim page by using the script source tag, which could be done as you can see it on the screen. So using the script tag, but uh, including the source, and so going back to my web server to the accesses folder. And then now using the iframer.js, and I'm just gonna end the script tag. Okay, now I'm just gonna delete the cookie log so you will see what happens. Now I'm just gonna click OK. And as you can see, it seems nothing happened, nothing specific, but if I go here in the cookie log, I have the cookie. So I just stole the cookie with the, without the user would notice it. Okay, these were the two basic things you could do with cross-site scripting. And in the next session, we will uh, continue with something a lot more powerful. And uh, that's the end of, the, end of this session.